In what has been classified as a rare daytime bombardment, surface-to-surface -surface precision guided missiles struck multiple targets in a suburb of Damascus City in a latest such attack that Syria attributed to Israel. According to Syrian military sources quoted by the regime-run Sana News Agency, quote, at 11.17 of Saturday morning, the Israeli enemy launched a number of missiles from the northern side of occupied Palestine, targeting some points in Damascus countryside. The source further claimed that the Syria army air defenses repelled the missiles and shot down a number of them, while adding that the aggression injured two soldiers and caused some material damage. Nevertheless, according to the London-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, at least five pro-Iranian fighters were killed and several were injured when multiple incoming projectiles destroyed a Hezbollah convoy and Iranian weapons and ammunition heading for Lebanon. While Jerusalem had repeatedly confirmed that it conducts near-weekly attacks on Iranian targets as part of efforts to thwart its military entrenchment in Syria, Lebanon and elsewhere throughout the region, the IDF spokesperson's unit stopped short from confirming nor denying its alleged responsibility vis-à-vis -vis Saturday's strike in response to TV7's request for comment. Meanwhile, the IDF Northern Command announced that it has commenced with a month of increased operational readiness, which includes an exercise that simulates a multi-arena scenario focused on Israel's northern theater. The purpose of the exercise is said to improve the IDF's of defensive and offensive capability in the face of a variety of scenarios while implementing operational plans at all levels in an integrated manner. However, in a written statement, the IDF stressed that the month of exercises is pre-planned as part of the 2021 training program and is scheduled to end on Thursday, November 18th. Separately, it is worth mentioning that on the same day of the alleged Israeli strike on Iranian targets in Syria, Israeli Air Force F-15 fighter jets escorted an American B-1B bomber over Israeli skies towards the Gulf, which the IDF referred to as a joint flight that illustrates the continued strategic cooperation of the Israel Defense Forces with the United States in the area. However, a senior military source told TV7 that alongside an evidence signal to the Iranians, the main intention of the overflight of the multi-purpose strategic bomber, which is capable of carrying nuclear payloads, aims at reassuring regional U.S. allies and partners of Washington's unyielding security-related commitments. Turning to the Italian capital Rome, where U.S. President Joe Biden asserted that the United States will respond to Iran's continued aggression against U.S. forces in Syria and elsewhere, that after an investigation into a strike on a U.S. outpost in Syria's El Tanf region, attributed full responsibility to the Islamic Republic of Iran, alongside similar attacks against U.S. installations in Iraq. With regard to the issue of how we're going to respond to actions taken by them, against interests of the United States, whether they're drone strikes or anything else, is we're going to respond, and we're going to continue to respond. The said response to Iran's orchestrated attacks against U.S. troops in the region follows a U.S. Treasury Department announcement on Friday in which it issued a fresh round of sanctions against entities and individuals involved in an Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps drone program, which U.S. state officials asserted threatens regional stability. In other yet related news, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken leveled a warning to the Islamic Republic that the Biden administration does not rule out a military option if the Ayatollah regime decides to opt out from engaging in diplomacy vis-à-vis -vis its nuclear program. Speaking to Face the Nation, Secretary Blinken further noted that while the United States still believes diplomacy is the best path forward, the Iranians must be prepared to resume negotiations from the point negotiators left off in June. Well, the Iranians have now said that they're uh, coming back to talks uh, toward the end of November. We'll see if they actually do. <laughs> That's going to be important. Uh, we still believe diplomacy is the best path forward uh, for putting the nuclear program back in the box it had been in under the, uh, the agreement, the so-called JCPOA. Uh, but we were also looking at, uh, as necessary, other options if Iran is not prepared 
uh, to engage quickly uh, in good faith, to pick up where we left off in June when these talks were interrupted by the, the change in government in Iran. The more rigorous wording used against Iran's defined course of action is not restricted to the United States, as the three European parties to the 2015 nuclear agreement, including France, Britain and Germany, are also evidently losing patience with Tehran, warning that the window for diplomacy is about to close. We are naturally off a rückkehr of Iran an den Verhandlungstisch, allerdings die Zeit vergeht und die Anreichungen werden im Iran fortgesetzt. Das beunruhigt uns sehr und deshalb war es Zeit, darüber zu sprechen, was man tun kann, damit die Bewaffnung des Iran mit Nuklearwaffen nicht stattfindet. Meanwhile in Tehran, Iranian Foreign Ministry Spokesman Said Hatib Zadeh sought to once again spread a fog on the regime's intentions regarding a resumption of nuclear negotiations claiming that the Islamic Republic will only return to negotiations if the United States can guarantee that any agreement reached will remain intact under subsequent administrations. In tandem, Hatib Zadeh insisted that Europe was also in breach of its commitments, just like the United States under the 2015 nuclear agreement, even though the European Union did not sanction Iran. Rather, European companies merely refuse to engage in business in Iran for fear of triggering U.S. sanctions. With that being said, Iran's voiced prerequisites for a return to the negotiating table in Vienna are seemingly disregarded by the European Union, which stressed that it continues to work behind the scenes to revive the talks after a meeting between EU political director Enrique Mora and Iran's chief nuclear negotiator Bagheri Kani. But I can confirm that there was a useful meeting between uh, chief Iranian negotiator.